Accounting Equation and Excel. Deposit form used to deposit into the checking account from a temporary clearing account often called undeposited funds. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation, the accounting equation using Excel. Here we are and first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six pack shirts, a must have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, you know, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four, so I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Excel, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just construct your own worksheet as we go from here or possibly just follow along with good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, three tabs down below. Example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on, is where we started with a blank worksheet but are basically continuing within a template at this time however we will be adding to that template as needed as we go through the practice problem let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing quick recap of what we have done thus far making in essence our accounting within an accounting equation format the equation basically acting as a trial balance from which we will construct our financial statements, balance sheet and the income statement. We started off pulling over our beginning balances into the system as though we had a prior accounting system uh, that we were using in elsewhere that we pulled in those beginning balances into the current system, which is often the case whenever we're starting a new accounting system. Then we looked at transactions typical to starting a new business, that being getting some capital, getting some money needed for the startup costs. And that would come from possibly the owner investing or possibly from a loan. Once we have that cash, then we're going to take it to invest in the things we need to generate revenue, that being property, plant and equipment, as well as inventory. And then we finally are getting to the point where we're selling some inventory and we also sell some service items looking at those forms. Now in the prior presentations, we have been selling uh, inventory and service items. And as we have been collecting the cash, we run into this problem that we often don't see in book problems because book problems just think of cash as it's seen on a financial statement, all cash kind of grouped together in like one account called cash. But in practice, of course, we have the added internal control difficulty of needing to do a bank reconciliation, given the fact that cash is the most important account that runs through like the lifeblood in our veins. It runs through every cycle within the accounting equation. Therefore, there's the most complex amount of activities in cash. And if we can verify cash with a reconciliation against the bank account, we're not only verifying the cash balance, but also the entire accounting system. So that means that the bank rec reconciliation is a huge internal control. And when we hit something to the bank, 
we have to do it in such a way that our accounting books will line up to the best degree possible as what will be on the bank's accounting books of our cash account so that we can reconcile as easily as possible. This often gets a little clouded these days because of the use of bank feeds. People often getting the idea that bank reconciliations are no longer a thing due to the fact that bank feeds are a thing. But that's not true exactly. It's just that the bank feeds could make things easier. However, you still need to figure out how best to use the bank feeds. So our problem here is on the deposit side of things, when we, when we sell stuff, we could put the money that we get from the customers directly into the checking account and then possibly use the bank feeds or bank reconciliation process to compare what we got in our bookkeeping system to what the bank got. And we might wait till it clears the bank and then record it with the use of the bank feed, which would be easier. But oftentimes the problem is that we're not going to get an electronic transfer for the exact amount that we build for possibly. We might get paid with a credit card. We might get paid with cash. We might have to use some intermediary transfer like a PayPal or a Stripe or something like that. In which case, we're going to have multiple sales items that are going to be grouped together and they're going to go into our checking account, not in as individual sales items, but as one grouped number. That means that if I record on our bookkeeping side deposits into the checking account at each sale, it will not tie out to what's on the checking account, which is going to group multiple sales together, resulting in a bank reconciliation process, which will be quite tedious as I try to combine all the things on my books to compare to what got grouped in one lump sum number on the bank statement. So to solve that problem, we have to use some kind of clearing account typically. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the sales, whether it be an invoice or whether it be a sales receipt, when I finally get paid on the invoice or receive payment from the sales receipt, instead of putting it directly into the checking account, we put it into some kind of clearing account, which is basically a cash account, but it's not our checking account. Then we're going to group that together with the help and use of whatever the credit card format is that's going to group the money before it goes into our checking account or the cash that's in our cash register. We're going to have to group that together, walk to the bank, try not to get robbed or anything, and then deposit in the same amount that's going to be on our, our check register. And if we use an intermediary platform, PayPal, Stripe, some other intermediary platform, the money that's coming from those platforms into our checking account we have to group it in that format. That's what we'll do this time. Let's go to the blank tab. So we left off last time with undeposited funds having 28,071 in it, which came from prior sales. We can imagine that sitting in the cash register, or we can imagine that uh, that, that is in the, the credit card companies because we got paid with a credit card or something like that, which hasn't yet hit our checking account. Or we can imagine that we got paid with some intermediary platform like a Stripe or something like that, but it hasn't yet hit uh, our bank account. Or even we can imagine it's in our checking account, but we still use the undeposited funds as a normal kind of process before we uh, transfer it into the checking account so that our books show the checking account number as a deposit form as opposed to a sales receipt form or receive payment form. Okay. <laughs> So now we're going to pull that in. <coughs> so let's imagine we're going to do this in two separate. Now, what would happen in practice if you're at a cash register, you would work all day at the cash register. And at the end of the day, we should have a practice of taking the money out of the cash register, taking it to the bank, only keeping enough money in the cash register to be able to pay back the change in the morning because that's the safest thing to do so that we're not holding on to a whole lot of cash and we're less likely to get robbed, especially if you're in like California where they just let people rob people like willy nilly these days. So that's so that's what we're gonna so that's what we want to do every night. If we're have a online system and we're making sales through a stripe or a credit card, we're gonna have to use whatever system is best to line up to the payment structure of Stripe or the credit card, which they might group the payments, you know, every week or something like that, and then uh, transfer it to our account. Also noting that they also might have a fee that they take when they do that, which means that as I transfer it from undeposited funds into the checking account, that's possibly where I want to account 
for the fee, the money the credit card company took out of our sales for the processing of uh, the credit card. Okay, but in our case, we wanted to kind of group the transactions together. So we're gonna just kind of imagine that we're going back in time a bit and it's and, and depositing uh, one group of, of money and then the next group of money, or we can imagine one's from cash sales and the other's from credit card sales or something like that. All right, so we're gonna say on 120, let's, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna say that we're gonna deposit into the checking account. Let's imagine these were the cash sales, although this would be a lot of uh, cash. Eh, depends on the type of business we're in, but 7571. So we've, we've got our security guard. He's, he's packing so that no one robs us on the way to the bank because we live in some crazy times, man. So we're gonna, we got him. So we're gonna make our way to the bank. We're looking, we're looking both sides across the, and we've got someone in, in, and we're taking our bags of money to the bank and we're gonna deposit that cash uh, into the checking account. And then the other side is gonna be in the undeposited funds. So it's gonna come out of the undeposited uh, funds and that's going to be the amount. Now, again, the grouping of the cash just happens to be the amount that's in the cash register that we want to then deposit, which has been recorded in undeposited funds, only keeping enough in the cash register to make sure that we can cover the payments so that we don't run a liability risk of holding on to too much liquid cash would be the general idea. So we probably want to make a deposit nightly if we have that kind of situation. Let's put zeros across the rest of the board here zeros across the rest of the board and boom 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 and then we'll put an underline underneath here underline home tab font group underline we'll put an underline here home tab font group underline put an underline here uh home tab font group underline all right, we'll copy down that transaction. Nothing is happening according to the accounting equation because one asset went up, one asset went down. Both of them are basically cash, but now we're putting it from our clearing account into the undeposited funds. You can imagine physically it going out of our cash register into our bank account. So there that is. Let's pull down the balance. Pulling down the balance. This is going to equal the sum of the last balance plus the current activity. Cash is now up to 68,527 in the checking account, safely in the checking account. We made it. We made it to the bank safely. We had a few encounters. My, my bodyguard had to take down a few people trying to steal our cash. But that's why, you know, he, he took them out. Not, but we didn't actually hurt them. Otherwise, we'd get sued uh, by the... The, the criminals would sue us if we if he if he hurt him or anything. So he lightly beat beat him up nicely, but not in a way that is going to get us sued. Okay, so then we'll copy the balance down here, and so that's going to be here's our new balance, which is of course the same as the other balance because no impact on the accounting equation. All right, let's do the the same thing. Let's deposit the rest of it. This time we'll imagine that it's this came into our credit card or it went into like a third party like a paypal so in this case we might we might not be at a cash register we might be uh doing stuff online but we have to use an intermediate purchasing institution like a credit card company or a paypal or a stripe and they're going to do a similar kind of thing they're not going to deposit each sale into our checking account individually oftentimes but group them together nightly or weekly depositing to your account in a group sum in which case you also might also have a fee that they charge that you have to take into consideration uh, at this point in time so let's imagine that happened for these the, the rest of the payments here 121 and by the way you could have a different undeposited funds for the form of payment but oftentimes that will complicate the sales side of things so we're just going to put everything into undeposited funds and this 20,500 we're going to imagine came through like a stripe or a paypal or the credit card 20,500 that we're grouping together and once again putting it into our checking account as a grouped number rather than as the individual sales that made up that 20,500. All right, so then the undeposit, so this is going up 
and undeposited funds is going down. So now we have that same transfer. We don't have the cash problem. So that's kind of nice. So I live in Cal. So it's, you got a lot of thugs around here. So it'd be better if I could do everything online and then I don't have to physically go to the, I don't have to hire the bodyguard to, to beat up all the people that are trying to rob me, but do it nicely. So the by people that are trying to rob me don't sue me or put me in jail for trying to protect my property. And then see this way I could just do a bank transfer and then I don't even have to deal with it, man. So that, but we still have this undeposited fund issue. So let's put an underline here, underline, and then we'll put an underline here and then we'll put an underline here and then we'll sum this thing up once again, bringing the balance down, bringing down the balance equals the sum of the last transaction and the current transaction. We got 89,027 in the bank account. Didn't even have to risk my life going to the bank. We just brought it in through the Stripe account, but they still had this grouping problem that we had to put it into our checking account so that I can do the bank reconciliation, which is gonna show the deposit at 20,500, even though it's consisting of multiple different sales items that I did all electronically so that, so that uh, uh, so that's nice. So we have everything tied out, but we still have to deal with the bank reconciliation. We still have to deal with this grouping problem. It's still an issue, even with all the technology. AI has not completely streamlined that yet. And uh, so <laughs> we still have to have some understanding here of the process. So let's copy this down. Let's copy this down. Let's copy this down. And then we'll put an underline here, underline home tab, font group, underline, boom. So now we've got uh, 23, uh, 860, uh, 20, <laughs> 238, 686 in assets, 88,505 in liabilities, equities at 150, 121. The book value of the company is assets minus liabilities equals the equity that 150,121, which as a sole proprietor would be allocated to us if it was a partnership, however, this amount would then be allocated to however many partners, like five partners or whatever, according to their capital account. If it was a corporation, it would be allocated or broken out into equal shares uh, governed by how many shares each individual has in terms of their interest in the business. Remember that if we sold the company, we're not going to get that book value unless we actually sold the entire company for that book value. If we were to liquidate the company, we only have 89,027 in cash, not 238,626, right? So we would, in order to get the 150,000, I couldn't just take it out of the checking account, obviously. I'd have to sell the, I'd have to collect on the receivables, sell the inventory and get the short-term investments, sell the property, plants and equipment for at least the book value, which means that if I did all that exactly, we would have then the total assets of 238,626 in cash at that point, but then I'd have to pay off the liabilities, accounts payable, the credit card, sales tax to the government, the loan payable, uh, the, for, to the bank, and then we would have the money left over to actually uh, liquidate the company at that point in time. Uh, and we'd have the balance here that we can take out of the checking account and then reduce this by the 150, 120, uh, one, 150, 121, just as a quick recap. All right, so that's gonna be that one.